Why did her Cortes conquer Mexico so easily? On August 13, 1521, the capital city of Tenochtitlan fell after a two-month siege. It was a victory that marked the end of an empire. 500 years later, researchers offer another look at this story. In 1521, Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés completed the invasion of Mexico's most powerful empire. Just a few hundred Spaniards landed near Veracruz on the Gulf of Mexico. This glorified story has many details. It includes the supposed betrayal of a novel woman against her own people. It tells of the Spanish overcoming a vastly larger Aztec army. But we find a little problem here. The narrative of Spanish conquest of Tenochtitlan comes mostly through the eyewitness accounts of Cortes soldiers. Other evidence comes from the historian Francisco Lopez de Gomara. His accounts are based on interviews with Cortes and his own letters. All of this is really just Spanish men aggrandizing their own story. Now researchers are re-examining this narrative. A more nuanced story is revealed. The Spanish heavily depended on indigenous allies like the Tlaxcalans and the Texcocans. They were also searching for an opportunity to put an end to Aztec hegemony in the region. It was always about Cortes building alliances. Cortes first landed near Veracruz on April 22, 1519. It was the co-called Good Friday. He had a force of a few hundred Spaniards. Shortly before his arrival there, he fought against indigenous Maya to the southeast of Veracruz. It resulted in a truce. The Maya presented slaves to Cortes, including a woman named Malincine. She is sometimes known as Marina or La Maliche in Spanish. She was a novel woman speaking the Aztec language, as well as some Maya languages. She knew courtly Nahuatl, the language of diplomacy. Jeronimo de Aguilar, a Franciscan friar, had also joined Cortes, the Franciscan Dutch shipwrecked, and was captured by the Maya years before. He had lived for years among the Maya as a slave and eventually as a warrior. He could speak some of the Yucatec Mayan languages, translating between Malincine and Cortes. Diego Velazquez, the governor of Cuba, tried to stop Cortes' expedition. Shortly after they landed, Cortes scuttled his boats. He did that to stop any of the troops loyal to Velazquez from escaping back to Cuba. Malincine and Aguilar quickly went to work, translating with some of the local Totonac people. The Totonac people were happy to rebel against Aztec tax collectors in the area. They also informed him about the Tlaxcalans. The Tlaxcalans were enemies of the Aztecs, who might serve as potential allies. Some the Totonac also joined the Spanish as scouts. They led the Spanish through the unknown geopolitical landscape of early 16th century Mexico. Cortes was being coached all the time by native peoples themselves. Tlaxcalan forces added about 10,000 to 20,000 warriors to the roughly 500 Spaniards at this time. First, there was the massacre in Cholula, a large Aztec-controlled city-state. Then Cortes and the Tlaxcalans made their way to the Aztec capital, Tenochtitlan. It was the site of modern-day Mexico City. The Europeans remained there for about eight months. Cortes kidnapped Moctezuma II and kept him in his own quarters well into 1520. Then Cortes left to fight a force sent by Velazquez from Cuba to stop him. He ambushed them and then recruited the survivors to their cause with promises of riches and land in the region. The situation had worsened by the time Cortes returned to the capital with Spaniards and Tlaxcalans. Some Aztec leaders began to rebel against the Spanish control of their capital. It happened after the Spanish massacred Aztec nobles in the city's great temple. Moctezuma II was killed shortly after. The Spanish and Tlaxcalans retreated from Tenochtitlan as the whole city rose against them. The second Spanish force, the Lascaz sent at this point, did its true damage. Smallpox began to tear through the region. Eventually, it took the life of Moctezuma II's successor, Quitlavik. The native population was devastated by disease. Cortes allied with Texcoco, an Aztec city. This alliance was key. Without Texcoco's cooperation, the Spanish couldn't have brought European-style naval warfare and siege weapons against the Aztecs. By August 13, 1521, the Tlaxcalans and Spanish finally succeeded in toppling Tenochtitlan. They also captured the neighboring Aztec city of Tlatelolco. But the Spaniards' struggle in the Americas was really just beginning. 
It took them decades to beat the Chichimex around the Zacatecas region. They didn't conquer some of the Maya city-states until the end of the 17th century. Tlaxcalans continue to be key allies of the Spanish. Now more researchers are starting to question the old narratives of the conquest. Malintzin, for example, has gone from Doña Marina to La Maliche. Doña Marina was a Spanish rendering of the indigenous name of the hero who helped the glorious Spanish conquest. In contrast, La Maliche was the traitor who sold out the indigenous people. The latter incarnation of her name still carries an insulting connotation in Mexico today. Other historians no longer speak of the conquest of the Aztecs, but rather the Spanish invasion.